Amen. Truly, saints, amen. We want to continue talking about how that we need the anointing. But in the beginning of this message, it may seem as though that we're not talking about the anointing. But this message in its beginning and how the Holy Ghost began to lead me this morning, talking about a little bit of prophecy. And, and I begin to, uh, uh, you know, how you're working on certain things and, and then the Holy Ghost just switch things on you. But then you got to go with the flow. Are y'all with me, church? Yeah. Yeah. Even though you may want to preach this or teach that or preach this or teach that. But, but if God telling you to teach or preach something else, you got to go the way he's telling you to go. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not the way you feel or the way you think or what you feel the people need. Because God knows the needs of his people. Yeah. Those that are with us this morning. We thank and praise God for you. Hallelujah. And amen. And we want to encourage you to keep on and keep it on. Keep the faith. Amen. In a time like this. Amen. You know, you wonder, will things ever get back to normal? I asked myself that question many times. I don't know, but by faith, I'm believing. Hallelujah. Amen. That everything's going to be all right. This morning, thanks to God and to you that are with us, we want to talk to you and share with you, amen, what God has laid into our spirit, still talking about the anointing, but Amen. This morning, this message sort of run into each other. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. And I, I won't run. I won't run away from it, but I'm going to run to it. Uh, Y'all with me this morning? Talking about prophecy. Amen. Being fulfilled in our day. And in the midst of this message, leading into why we need the anointing. You see, when we begin to understand the prophecy. And the thing that you and I are experiencing our day, I'm not talking about yesterday or the day before, uh, he's all right in me, but I'm talking about the day and the day out. And I'm talking about things that are happening right now before us, saints of God. And we need to understand these things, praise the Lord. He's all right in me. Saints of God, many of us, amen, since 2020, amen, this is a the year that many folks won't forget, 2020, amen. But I know we're in 21, man, almost at the end of it. But yet, thanks of God, things hit us unexpectedly, amen. In this world, not just, amen, us as a nation, but the world itself. And it hit many, amen, different uh, cycles of life inside of what God has created, what God, amen, has spoken to be. And, and what will come to pass and what's going to happen. He's all right in you. Yeah. And through it, thanks to God, it has caused prophecy and things that just begin to blossom. Amen. You and I to see some of these things happen right before our eyes. Isn't he all right? And I'm telling you, thanks to God, if Satan, amen, had his way, he would keep it this way. But I'm here to tell you, things going to get back on some course, but we are in a time, saints of God, where we in the church world need to understand, amen, prophecy and the time that we're in right now. Amen. Isn't he all right? Yeah. So talking a little bit about prophecy being fulfilled in our day, I want to say to you as we begin to share with you, amen, with the little time that we have this morning, saints of God, how that Humanity and mankind itself today, thanks to God, amen, is facing, amen, all kind of crises and all kind of wars, amen, among, amen, not just nation, but among people themselves. He's all right in you. Yeah. <laughs> we got people, amen, fighting for, amen, and, and, and shall I say at war about political things today. We got people at war about all kind of things around this world. Now, remember, I'm not just talking about us as a nation, but I'm talking about the world itself. Amen. But you do have to look at us because this is the world and this is the nation that you and I live in. Praise the Lord, everybody. But humanity, you and I, we're facing right now today, thanks to God, all kind of wars, neighborhoods are fighting among each other. Amen. Are y'all with me, church? But all kinds of diseases, amen, is popping up. 
Amen. Isn't he all right? Hallelujah. Amen. Even myself, amen, for the last two weeks fighting, amen, some kind of, uh, 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 I call it an end that got into my body, amen, and, and just began to, amen, stir it up, amen. I think I just got food for me. I really believe that's what it grows. Are y'all with me? But yes, thanks to God, as you get older, it's hard to fight some things as you, when you're younger. Are y'all with me, sir? Amen. Things just don't move as faster. Amen, as they did when you was a young folk. If God don't mind me saying it that way. God's all right in me. But as the Holy Ghost began to say, amen, understanding, amen, the healing process of God and understanding healing and understanding miracles and knowing sense of God that God do heal instantly and there are miracles and there are healings that God heal, it is a process. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's all right in you. But you are now living in a time of prophecy, saints of God, where diseases, amen, and pollution, amen, drought, famine, amen, fire, and earthquake is all over our world. And if you just look at the news long enough, you'll see these things happening. Amen, somebody. If, if you just take the time and you can see it happen, you've got to be able to take these things that you're looking at and seeing and hearing about and understand and bring them, amen, into the scripture to understand the time that we're in. They're not something just is happening. This is happening for a reason. Remember, God cannot lie and man cannot change the course in which this world is moving on. Praise the Lord, everybody. Man cannot change, amen, the thing that God had prophesied and said, will be and will happen. It's going to happen, saints of God. Isn't he all right? So understand, we see these earthquakes. Amen. We see these diseases. We see these fires. And just bring it to our nation alone, saints of God. Amen. Look at the fire, the earthquake, the weather patterns, and all of these different things. Are y'all with me this morning? What you're seeing is prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes, many of us would just simply say, oh, that's just bad weather. Oh, that's just an earthquake. Oh, that's just a volcano. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Where would it all lead to? Or where is it leading to? Talking about prophecy being fulfilled in our day. This is why we need the anointing. Are y'all with me, church? And I want you to understand, I'm still talking about the anointing now. This is why we need the anointing. Hallelujah. To understand these things and to know what to do. Amen. How the church, amen. The church need to know what to do. I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about us as individuals. We need to know what to do. Amen. In our lives. Amen. Our family lives. Amen. We need to know the decision. Amen. That we need to make at a time like this. You make the wrong decision, it takes you 10 years to recover now. Are y'all with me, church? So you, you got to be very careful when you make certain decisions in our world today. Because prophecy and the fulfilling of these things will not stop for me nor for you. Isn't he all right? So thanks to God, where is all of this leading to? All of this prophecy that's been fulfilled right before our eyes. The Bible, saints of God, prophecy revealed that God is working through, amen, these current events to bring about a future or a future time, saints of God, when the whole world will be at peace. And, and you got to understand that. See, Satan want to bring about a false peace, amen. Remember when they say peace and Satan in sudden destruction? See, remember, Jesus is going to bring peace to the earth for thousands of years. Satan, amen, is trying to duplicate and trying to bring in early a false peace. Are y'all with me, saints of God? And many of God's people get caught up in this false peace. Amen. We got to be very careful, saints of God. Amen. How we join ourselves to this and to them. Amen. He's all right in me. So, saints of God, God is you and all, all these things are happening. And the Lord has spoken these things to be. 
but it's leading to what God is doing, bringing the world itself to a place of peace for a period of time. If you understand, saints of God, what God is doing now, amen, and what, amen, he has planned for his creation, amen, you will have no hope, amen, you will have hope even in time of trouble. I don't care what trouble and what may come upon this earth, amen, because listen, this is sure as I sit here, and I don't say this to try to scare anybody, but amen, COVID is nothing to what's coming, praise the Lord. This is just the beginning, praise the Lord, because God cannot lie. Praise the Lord, everybody. And this is just the beginning. This is nothing compared to what is going to get this earth, amen, this world. Praise the Lord, everybody. So, so, so you and I as sons and daughters of God, understanding prophecy and understanding what God is doing, amen, and what God is going to happen, it helps you and I, no matter how, what type of trouble or troublesome time that we may find ourselves in. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's why when the church world reacted it in the same way the world itself reacted it, amen, to amen, COVID, it made me wonder sometimes, amen, is all the preaching and teaching has it been in vain. And I don't say that to offend anyone, but has it been in vain when it comes to what God said? Or do we fear it greater, amen, or think that it's greater than our God, our Creator? No, it's not. Praise the Lord, everybody. So, in what is His plan, saints of God? As you and I understand God's plan, understand prophecy, we have already been spoken, then these things will not bring certain fears into our life, saints of God. He's all right in me. So remember, the world, saints of God, is suffering, and the world is going to suffer even more. Even we as a nation, saints of God, amen, we've got to understand there's things, amen, that is about to happen, and things that have already begun to happen, amen. That's why we, we have to be very careful in a lot of things that we do. We have to be very careful and very watchful, amen, over our lives. Praise the Lord, over our lifestyle, over what we do and what we don't do. Praise the Lord, everybody. You see, thanks to God. The Bible reveals, amen, man, amen, when it comes to technology, amen, and all of these things, the Bible even shows us, and we can see it today with our own natural eyes, how man has technically and in his knowledge how it just increased and it increased and increased. But you know, all right. But the Bible prophesied these things would be until the return of Jesus. But saints of God, he's all right in me. And the Bible talks about how that amen in prophecy and Daniel, how amen there will be masses traveling, changing and traveling, how we travel. And you know you can go anywhere anytime so easily now. Amen. It'll be all right. It'll take a lot of time to try to get into all the specifics, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Thanks to God. Man, there was a time he could not travel like he could travel today. Amen. Just think. Amen. I can travel some 3,000 miles in and out of two hours or two and a half hours. Are y'all with me, church? Hallelujah. There was a time a journey like that would take you two or three months. What a mighty God we serve. But God had prophesied. So you and I are living in the midst of prophecy. But we see it as technology and we see it as advancement, but not understanding what God has said and what we're living in. Are y'all with me, sir? Just give me a little time this morning. I won't hold you here long this morning, but I see the Holy Ghost want to stir us up about prophecy. But we live in a time and in a church world today. Amen. But the only prophecy that we're hearing a lot about, amen, is about, amen, you getting $50 or $100 or, amen, or you getting blessed or this. I'm not with me, church. That's the type of prophecy that we're receiving more in church today than we're receiving anything. And you don't see none of that, amen, in the Bible. People don't like it when I say that. But it's just the truth. 
You don't see it in the Bible. You don't see it with Jesus. And you don't, I don't know it's popular today though. Oh, he spoke into my life. <laughs> I'm speaking to your life too today. Whoop it up. Y'all with me, church? I'm not trying to start nothing. I'm just being honest. He has the word. She has the word. And then the prophet or the prophet get upset because you don't receive the word they gave you. And that was God. Let's move on. The world is suffering. And the world is going to continue to suffer because of prophecy. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. I ain't no preaching. You see, I'm sitting down on his leg this morning. But understand something. The world that we're in, thanks to God. Amen. The world is suffering. You wouldn't think the world is suffering, but it's suffering. Hallelujah. Because the world is not going to accept Jesus. So church, quit acting like the world is going to accept Jesus. It is not going to accept Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. It may give us all the free food, all the free meat, all the free candy, all the free cookies, but I'm sorry. The world is not going to accept Jesus. And many of God's people today, this has got them trapped. So the Bible revealed all these things to us, saints of God. We see in our world today, saints of God, and prophets have already spoken these things. Amen. There will also be a time of mass travel and large movement, amen, of immigrants. See, when you see all these immigrants moving from their countries in different places, not just from these coming into the United States, but all over the world. God has already spoken this. It lets you know the time that we're in. Amen. But the devil, he gets into us and wants us want to be a racial thing. You, you see, flesh and blood. Are y'all with me, church? Praise the Lord, everybody. Let me preach our message and get out of here and go start something for me. But you've got to understand, saints of God, this is thing God has spoken already. Isn't he all right? Remember the Bible said in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, in verse 4, he said, but you, Daniel, travel me just a little while this morning. He said, but you, Daniel, shut up the words of the book and seal the book until the time of the end. And this is the time of the end. The book that Daniel once sealed up is unsealed. He's all right in me. The Bible says, he said, and seal up the book until the time of the end. He said, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase in the earth. And this is the time that you and I are living in today, saints of God. Our children, our babies and grandbabies are born so intelligent. Amen. It seems as though they're born with a computer in their hand. Y'all don't hear me. They have no fear of this technology. They learn it quicker than Papa and Nana. He's all right, isn't he? God's all right, isn't he? I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. And the Bible let us know here about these scriptures. Give me a little more time this morning, saints of God. The Bible said that the angel Gabriel, amen, commanded Daniel to seal, amen, or to preserve. Let, let's break this down. That make sure we understand what was happening here. The Bible said it says seal, in other words, preserve, amen, the prophecies of this book. <laughs> Observe the prophecies of this book because it's going to have to be preached about. It's going to have to be talked about. It's going to have to be taught in the churches. Amen. And to the sons and daughters of God, he said, preserve the prophecies. Amen. Of this book. Amen. He's all right in me. Remember, to seal a document simply meant to preserve the document. Amen. By putting it in a safe place. Amen. And protecting it so that its sense of God would be able to be, it would be available to those 
amen, who we need it in the future. And you and I have come to that place in the future right now that we need, amen, to understand these things that was written, amen, a fourth time for our learning. Lest in any time we should let them slip, amen, Holy Ghost, work in us, through us, and out of us. Amen. And unlock, open up this book and let us understand the thing and how it pertains to us today. He's all right, isn't he? This book that the angel had the prophet to preserve the seal until a time like this. You see, sense of God, God, amen, wanted the prophecies of Daniel preserved and made available for his people. He's all right, isn't he? He wanted his people, amen, to treasure and to protect, amen, the precious prophecies, amen, for all future generations. But saints of God, amen, the preachers and the prophets and the apostles and the pastors and teachers were prophesying, amen, about everything, what we, what, what we need to be prophesying about in the all right. I'm not saying that God can't use a man. I'm not saying that God can't use a woman to speak into your life. In the all right, he can use the gift of the word of knowledge through an individual. He can use the gift of the word of wisdom. In the all right, he can use the gift of the word of exaltation. Ah, y'all with me this morning? But thanks to God, there's so much prophecy going on. So you don't know what to believe half of the time in the all right people would gather together just to hear a word amen spoken into their lives instead of hearing amen what they need to do amen to be saved in the all right in the all right saints of god down through the centuries Amen. God, people, amen, would seek to understand these prophecies and the saints of God. Hallelujah. From the time that I've been a child of God, I've been seeking to understand these prophecies and to understand the time that we're living in today. Saints of God, and as the event took place and it's taking place right now, they, you and I, and them back then, would understand more and more what God, amen, has foretold, sense of God that should let us know what we need to do to get our house in order. Amen. Y'all know the story. Amen. Maybe God will give you a message about it one day. Amen. The handwriting is on the wall. Amen. The handwriting is on the wall. When it comes to us as a nation, the handwriting is on the wall. When it comes to you as an individual, the handwriting is on the wall. Y'all don't hear me this morning. It be all right. You know what you're doing and what you're not doing. God's all right in me. Thanks to God, I say again, as the Holy Ghost leads me, prophecy is not going to stop for me and it's not going to stop for you. God's all right in me. So thanks to God through the events of history. Saints of God, you and I and them back then would understood and we understand just like they understood then that God is in control. Amen. And he's the ruler. Amen of nations. Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? He's the ruler of nations of the world and even of the suffering. Amen. That amen has come to bow upon our world. Our world and mankind is bringing many things upon himself. Is he all right? Is he all right this morning? Thanks to God. I don't care whose leadership. It does not change who God is, and it does not change what God has spoken. Hallelujah. No president can change the order. Amen. The prophecy in which God has spoken. Amen. Some thought that, amen, he's all right in me. Some thought that Reagan could do it. Some thought that Bush could do it. Some thought that Clinton could do it. Some thought that Obama could do it. Some thought that Trump could do it. Some think that, amen, Biden can do it. None can do it, saints of God. One of the biggest mistakes that our leaders, our kings of our nation, 
I'm talking about the great United States of America. One of the biggest problems we make as a nation, we think that we can guide Israel. We think that we can control and dictate to what they should do and not do. God is in charge of them. God has dispatched a man of God and angel to watch over that nation. But we think that they need us. Y'all don't hear the sense of God. He's all right in you. You've got to understand, hallelujah, God, amen, is in charge of all nations. Amen. God is in charge of those, amen, that said in headship, whether you believe it or not. I don't care how corrupt they may be. God's all right in me. And I don't care what their name may be. They're sitting there because God born them there at this time. He's all right in me. In the all right Amen. In the end, thanks to God, the Lord, amen, would be victorious. Amen. And what God has spoken is going to come to pass. Thanks to God. And what God has said, it will be delivered. Remember the suffering, amen, and the hardships of this world. Thanks to God. God can change it just like that if he chooses to. Amen. But that means he would have to change the course of prophecy that he've already spoken in the all right, in the all right, through the fulfillment, saints of God of prophecy. You and I must understand that God's people, amen, should be assured, amen, that every promise of the Lord, amen, was turned, amen, and is true, amen, and will be fulfilled. Oh, that's what the church, amen, is not standing upon. Hallelujah. You see, the church want God to change his mind. Amen. Many preachers want God to change his mind. I'm sorry, he's not going to do it. If y'all right, they're telling you things like God is not going to judge America. When you hear a preacher talk like that, you might want to cut them off. I know this is not. But I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. He loves his nation more than he loves God. And not what God has already spoken. I love my nation too. God's all right in me. Thanks to God, despite, amen, the boom and technology and all the ability and everything that is taking place, man, knowledge and spiritual matters have become stagnated. Amen. We've taken, we've not learned from the natural to understand the spiritual thing to call us to grow more and more in our God. But we've taken the knowledge and technology and what we can now do with technology in a wrong, amen, many of those in the church of their faith in their God. Amen. Mankind, amen, not you, but me and mankind think Amen. The technology is above God. They think that they can create this, create that. Yo, don't hear me. You got to understand, saints of God, what man is after. You got to understand all of man. Hallelujah. Amen. And the nature of man that is ruled in our world. Amen. Does not love God. Amen. God said, if you love this world, God called you an enemy also. This world is an enemy to our God, to our creator and our maker. Y'all don't hear me this morning. He's all right in me. Technology, thanks of God, is not, amen, the reason that many of us think it's there for. God, he's all right in me. You've got to understand our technology is going to be used to fight against God and to try to keep prophecy from being fulfilled. God's all right in me. In the all right, I'm just getting stirred up here a little bit, talking about a little bit about prophecy, just a little bit. Remember our ability, thanks of God, to get along. Amen. With each other. Amen. It's not improved. Amen. In the last 4,000 years of man history, man is still fighting each other. Amen. No matter race, creed, color, whatever. Amen. Man just cannot get along. God's all right in me. That's why God warned you and I when we're born again of the Lord and of the Spirit to remember that our battle is not against flesh and blood. 
Yeah, I mean, all right. Don't get mad at your brother and your sister in the flesh. You got to remember, there might be something behind. Amen. Something visible. Amen. Instigating the problem that you cannot see. In the same manner in which they hung him on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They did not know that they were being influenced by the invisible force. Is he all right? Is he all right? In the same manner when Peter simply told him, Master, you don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to die. You don't have to do this or whatever it might be. Amen. I heard him say, Get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah, he identified that invisible force, a man that was working, a man trying to, a man get people changing. Oh, he's all right, isn't he? So, thanks to God and to you that are here this morning, we understand the time that we're living in, all of the prophecy and the thing that's before us. God's all right, isn't he? Amen. Remember, we haven't even got the ability over 4,000 years of history. Amen. To get along with one another. And not only that, we see that same attitude in the church of the living God. Saints can't get along with each other. You know something's wrong. Amen. We the several full of the Holy Ghost. Been baptized and born in Jesus' name. Amen. Came up. Amen. Out of the water, speaking in tongues, as the Spirit of God give utterance. Amen. Preachers and pastors can't even get along with each other. He's all right, isn't he? I'm only telling you the truth. Amen. But remember, the Bible said, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, but as in the days of Noah, amen, you and I are experiencing these prophets have read before. So also is the coming of the Son of Man might be. Saints of God, read the scripture and you'll see the time that you're living in. He said, but as the day, amen, of noble work, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But as in the day, amen, they, amen, were before the flood, amen, they was eating and drinking. Amen, eating and drinking is very popular today. In the all right, hey, all oh, praise the Lord, everybody. It hey, was evening drinking. Amen. People are hardly cook no more. Amen. Amen. The restaurants are getting full again. In the all right, eating and drinking. Amen. The majority of the restaurant now, amen, are involved into their restaurant. Amen. So you can eat and drink. Amen. God's all right in there. There's no accident, thanks to God. You've got to understand the time that we're living in, that they're eating and drinking and married and giving in marriage. Amen. I wish they had the time to just deal with this one scripture until they met, until that day, amen, that Noah entered the ark and the Bible said, and, and do not until the flood came. In other words, thanks to God, the people didn't know nothing until the flood came. In other words, they did not accept amen preaching of Noah, just like the day the preaching, amen, of the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is not being accepted, amen, in many corners of the earth, amen, in many environments, amen, in many neighborhoods. In the all right, in the all right, I know we see the TV that looks like it's everywhere. Oh, it is in that standard. But saints of God, you've got to understand the time that we're living in. The Bible clearly revealed, saints of God, that Noah, amen, they was, amen, characterized by sin and violence. You and I living in a world today just the United States alone. Amen. And you begin to search around the world. We live in a world of sin and violence on every hand. In the all right, in the all right, nothing but violence over here and violence over there. It's no accident. It's prophets and being fulfilled. Amen. And sin on every hand. 
You see, sin, amen, is the door. Sin is the energy, amen, that's called the violence of sin. God's all right in me. Then the Lord, amen, saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, just like that then. He sees it now. The wickedness of man in the earth is great. Y'all don't hear me, saints of God. The wickedness of man is great like it was then today in the earth. In the all right, in the all right. And they even in, even the intense and thought of their heart was on the evil continuous. This is the time that we're living in. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. Ha! Ah, hallelujah. It has come before our God again. That's why we see prophecy. It's beginning to speed itself up thanks to God. This is why we need the anointed. This is why we need the anointed because the end of all flesh has come before God once again. Amen. For the earth is full. Amen. With violence, God said, Amen. He's all right in me. And he said, Behold, I will destroy them. Amen. With the earth in the all right. Even the great apostle Paul. Amen. Also, God, hallelujah, inspired him to look into the future. Amen. So we would get a better understanding in our days. Amen. When Paul began to describe and talk a little bit about the future, he said that the last day, amen, he called them perilous times. In the all right, how many of you know we're living in perilous times? Even in his day, it's become greater and greater and greater. Perilous times. We're living in today, saints of God. Time. Let me explain just a little bit of it. I don't want to hold you here too much longer. But tell us time. Amen. Time. Amen. Materialism. Amen. Moral. Amen. Degrade. Amen. And false. Amen. Spirituality. Denying the power of God and the Bible itself. Tell us time. We're living in troublesome times, saints of God. If y'all right. Amen. The devil. Amen. Even want the church become more material minded. Amen. Than the church should be. God doesn't mind you having anything. Y'all make sure you hear me. Hear me clearly. And get from him the blessing. Ah, he's all right in me. And you all right. Now tell them what they need to get out of here. Now tell them what they need to do to maintain why they're here. In the all right. In the all right. We're living in perilous times, thanks to God. Amen. He's all right in me. Thanks to God, the Western civilization. And the Western world is constantly, amen, decaying, amen, because of the prophecy that God has spoken. This is not the kind of message that people want to hear, but you need to hear it to keep you alert and to keep yourself prepared and to keep your hearts in order, amen, because, amen, it is written. In the all right, consider this as an alarm. A crisis basis. In other words, let me break it down this way to you. We're living in a world that has pretty much been bewitched. We're living in a society that has pretty much been bewitched. Amen. We're working, amen, in environments and places that have pretty much been bewitched. I know I'm starting something. He's all right in there. But you've got to understand the time and the world that we lived in. With sons and daughters of God. He's all right in me. I'll tell you, my leg feeling better if you're preaching like this. In the all right. In the all right. Amen. Been bewitched, been tricked by the enemy. That's why Jesus told the church, be not entangled 
in the affairs of this life. Be not entangled in the affairs of this world. Don't let this world get you all tangled up in the church. In the all right, then you'll be pilgrims, amen, not passing through. But you'll be pilgrims just staying here. He's all right in me. Thanks to God, you got to understand the world supply, amen, of good food and clean water is not good today. But this also is part of prophecy. In the all right, when you look at all those ships out there, amen, can't come in the port. Something is happening in our world. Are y'all with me? Always remember, I got the clothes out here. Always remember, saints of God, that whoever control the water for, they control the world. Never forget that. And maybe one day we'll talk about it in depth more and how the Bible described that. That's why we have some, that's why, that's why the United States and China and Russia and Britain and these countries try to build such great war machines out on the water. They understand this. He's all right in me. Thank you, God. You've got to understand. Amen. We're packed with our water. Amen. And with, amen, with our food supply. Amen. Things are changing so rapidly. In the all right? In the all right? Notice the restaurant food prices is shooting up. Amen. Well, I used to get my cup of coffee for a dollar and something. Now they said it's a dollar and 80 cents. I said, good God of mine. Amen. Y'all don't hear me? Is the all right? So this is the time we're living in because of pollution. Amen. And because of the degrading of the environment. Thanks to God and global warning. It's the realness in there also. But there's a thing that man has added there too. You've got to understand the weather pattern has changed tremendously in our world today. Massive earthquake, amen, volcanoes, amen, insects, plagues, amen. He's all right in me. Hallelujah. And remember, saints of God, I'm about to get you out of here because I can't preach all of this this morning. Remember, saints of God, we as a nation, amen. Are no longer in the same position that we want were in. We are now a debted nation. Uh, somebody ought to say amen. amen. I told you months ago that the money that you receive is not free money. Isn't it all right? We are now an indebted nation. And let me just, just cut this here. Let me cut this short just a little bit. Amen. And you're welcome to my note. But remember, the United States alone, saints of God, currently owe trillions and billions of dollars. Amen. That we will never, we will never be able to repay. I don't think you hear me. We will never be able to repay. To understand prophecy and to understand that from God's perspective, we've been set up. You may not think it. Once was the world economical empire. Still is a rich nation. Please don't misunderstand me here. We will never be able to repay debt. We will be, and many of the whoever will be left holding the bag. A nation, amen, thanks of God, was once. Amen. The energy when it came to economics. Are y'all with me, church? Amen. But America has at least been listen. We cannot pay it, and I'm our bishop can't get it all. This we cannot pay it. See, we as a nation, we depended on a lot of our accesses that we had overseas, and we made a lot of money on a lot of things. But see, a lot of them caught up with us. And they don't need us like they needed us in some thing. But we 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 once controlled the dollar. You couldn't buy all. The only way you could buy all was by dollar. That's why we went to war so easy. Amen. It, it was all about the dollar. 
The only way you can start, you have to buy a dollar. That's what's around the world. We control that as a nation. We dictate it. Are y'all with me? We put that on them. We put that on the world. But no, it has changed, church. Yeah. I hope y'all hear me. I hope you understand prophets in the time we're in. And now they're trying to just give you more and more money. We're being set up to fall as a nation. Well, we're going to fall. We're going to fall economically. We can't, we can't pay that. Let me leave that alone. Bishop, leave that alone. That's, that's prophecy. We can't do it. We cannot do it. Because the access and thing we once had it doesn't, it's not there anymore. Especially overseas. And we pay the farmer, not the farmer. Are y'all with me, church? Church, this is why we have a job to do. I'm closing, man. I know you. This is why, church, and you that are with me, we have a job to do. And this is why we need the anointing. As we understand prophecy, and just a little bit of things that I touched, just a little things this morning, didn't touch a lot this morning, but just a little. This is why the church, we need the anointing. The things that the anointing do for you and for us in this world and in prophecy that are being fulfilled. The anointing opened doors for you and I Amen. Sense of God. He's all right, isn't he? Amen. That cannot be shut. And doors that were once shut to us. Sons and daughters of God. We need the anointing to get through. To navigate in this world. I'm talking about we need the anointing to do this job. To preach this gospel. We need the anointing, amen, that makes you and I to be successful, amen, in a world, amen, where others may fall, amen, and, and society may fall, but not the church. God cannot lie. We need the anointing that will empower us to press on. When a lot of times we want to give up, I'm tired of church. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. Don't look like nothing happened. This is our church folks' attitude is becoming. I'm talking about church people. I'm not talking about universal faith. I'm talking about church people. I've been to Chicago, Georgia, preaching, and I see the same thing. I was expecting to see something different in some of these places. And then I said, oh my God, no different than I ever did. They did with the same issues. My God, sometimes, sir, that, that bothers me. We need the anointing that makes you and I, amen, an entirely person different. And God can work good us doing some out of us in this hour. That's why we need the anointing Amen. That would make our face shine that when we walk in the place. They know it's something different about you. We need the anointing to energize us. Many of us are losing the energy to try to go forward. We need the anointing to make the word of God burn in our hearts once again. We need the anointing to replace, amen, all the inhabitants and all the inabilities and whatever. Trust the abilities, amen, of the anointing. We need the anointing, amen, to cause the purpose of God to be revealed to us in our life like never before. We need the anointing to do these things in this golden hour as prophecy has been, has been fulfilled. We need the anointing, thanks to God, to promote physical and well-being in our life. Lord, anoint my body, anoint my leg. Oh, y'all don't hear me this morning. I need the anointing. 
We need the anointing to empower you and I to serve God. We need the anointing like never before. But direction is hard sometimes. In the right direction. Which way do I go now? We need the anointing for refreshing in our lives. We need the anointing to break some of these yokes. Yeah. Some of these heavy burdens that we're trying to carry. I can't carry daddy's burdens. I can't carry mama's burden. I can't carry sister's burden. I can't. Come on, somebody. This thing can so heavy. But why can't you carry each other's burden? That's how the devil is fighting now. It's not easy. It takes your anointing to deal with these burdens and to break these yokes. Praise God, everybody. America cannot break the burdens and the, and the yoke that is on Israel. God's going to do that himself. And no other nation, according to the word. He's all right in this. We need the anointing to enrich us and to encourage us. We need the anointing. He's all right in this. I got like getting a little longer in the day. He's all right in this. I guess get comfortable sitting on this stool. This is Apostle Thomas, pastor of Universal Faith Church, located at 904 West Street, New Bern, North Carolina. We thank God for you being with us. Amen. He's all right, isn't he? All right. Thanks to God, I tell you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.